coming up. I don't believe you truly recognize how damning your evidence has been to the Justin Trudeau government. GC Strategies is persona non grata. They've lost all their contracts with the government. They've lost their security clearance. And you aligned yourself with GC Strategies, which brings into question the RCMP may be knocking on your door. So if you haven't lawyered up, you probably should be considering doing that. For Sorry, now, I'm going to ask. I just want to clarify miss, miss, something. Miss, miss, just wait a second. I'll hear you in a second. You get a point of order. Just something else that I wish to ask. I don't okay. know why you have always talk down to me, Chair. It's not nice. This guy's garage. Like and subscribe. KPMG is one of the biggest accounting firms in the world. How many offices do you have in Canada? Thank you for the member's question. I'll answer that to the chair. Uh, I don't actually know the answer off the top of my head, but I would be happy to uh, to respond to that question do you know immediately how many, after. Do you know how many staff KPMG has uh, in Canada? Thank you for thank you for the member's question, and I'll also try to answer that question. Um, I do know that we have about 800 partners, and in terms of the total number of staff, again, I would have to get back to you with that answer. So you said in your opening statement that. KPMG was subcontracted by GC Strategies. So you, um, off the top of your head, fair enough that you're, you're not sure how many offices are. There are a lot of KPMG uh, offices and hundreds of uh, staff. Um, does KPMG operate any of their offices out of the basements of uh, suburban Ottawa residences? Thank you for the member's question. Uh, I'll answer that to the chair. Uh, we do not. We do not have any businesses run out of basements that that we're aware of. Right. So I, I find it uh, I find it incredible that uh, that KPMG, this massive accounting firm, with uh, hundreds and hundreds of staff and dozens and dozens of uh, of offices, ends up as a subcontractor for uh, two dudes working out of a basement in suburban. Ottawa. How much were you paid, KPMG, by GC Strategies for your work on ArriveCan? Thank you for the question. Uh, I can take that one as it relates to the cybersecurity piece of work. So we charged GC Strategies $400,000 for the cybersecurity piece of work that we performed for the ArriveCan app. So it was cybersecurity work? Exactly, yes. Could ArriveCan have uh, got off the ground without KPMG's contributions? Thank you for your question. With respect to the ArriveCan app, KPMG was not involved in the development of the ArriveCan can app. We were involved um, for the assessment of the security of the ArriveCan app, and it was already off the ground when we were assessing it. Did KPMG contact the Government of Canada regarding work on ArriveCan first, or did the Government of Canada contact KPMG first? Uh, thank you for the member's question. I'll answer that to the chair. So KPMG initially participated in the SEPS agreement that I mentioned in the opening remarks. Uh, we were awarded a spot on that vendor of record contracting vehicle, uh, in July of 2020, and our work was subsequently um, contracted off of that vehicle. And we'll just uh, accept that all of your questions are through the chair. Uh, thank you. Um, how many non-competitive contracts related to ArriveCan was KPMG awarded? So thank you again for your question. What, uh, what I'd like to say is, first of all, all of our work was contracted through the government's vehicles, uh, procurement vehicles that were directed to us. Understood. Just the number of non-competitive contracts, please. So the contracts that were directed to KPMG for the, and I'm talking about the public health agency work at this point, uh, was we had a TA that was directed to us through the SEPS vehicle, and then there were two subsequent contracts that were directed to us through public health agency. And so, then the, so the number's three? for the public health agency related work. And uh, those those non-competitive contracts were amended multiple times. Yes or no, please. Sorry, I just thank you for the member's question. I just want to confirm that the initial TA was through the competitive SEPS vehicle. So that was competitively uh, awarded and then subsequently directed to us. And sorry, could you repeat the second question, please? The contracts were amended multiple times. Yes or no? 
Uh, thank you for the member's question. And yes, our contracts were amended a few times. So those amendments saw uh, the fee for service increase, uh, the length of time for the contract increase, and the deliverables uh, reduced. Is that correct? Thank you for the member's question. So the initial TA and the initial contract through Public Health Agency were incredibly detailed in terms of deliverables and key activities we were asked to provide. The subsequent and the final contract that was awarded by the Public Health Agency was less so by Public Health Agency specifically because you have to remember that this was during the third and fourth wave of the pandemic and they required more flexibility because of because of wanting to to be able to respond to unforeseen events and, and policy changes. At so, the so time. just for clarity, the Auditor General said in her report that <laughs> KPMG had contracts amended to do ex exactly what I detailed: uh, add additional costs, uh, make the deliverables over a longer period of time, uh, with less specific deliverables. Do you agree with the Auditor General's assessment? Yes or no, please. Thank you for the member's question, and uh, we agree with the Auditor General report findings. Thank you. Thank you very much. Who in the government was KPMG's contact for the non-competitive contracts uh, that KPMG received? So, the, the, the name of the individual at the department, please. Uh, so I, I'd be happy to start the, the, just the description of that through the public health agency work, and then I might ask um, Hartaj to speak to the other contract. You have about 10 seconds to, to get us a name before the end of my time. So please. we were contacted um, through the SEPS vehicle to, to, um, to work with the public health agency uh, under Sharif Abdu. Thanks very much. Thank you, Chair, and thank you for the witnesses for your attendance today. <clears throat> Since Justin Trudeau formed government, uh, KPMG has been one of the leading recipients of government contracts to the tune of almost a quarter billion dollars. Of that, we hear today your work surrounding the ArriveCan app and implementation is roughly $5 million. Now, I've listened very carefully to your evidence. I've heard references to the CBSA. I've heard references to public health. Have there been any other ministries involved? Thank you very much for the member's question. Uh, KBMG has been doing business with the federal government for many years. Not asking that question. In relation to the Arrive Can app okay. and implementation, were you working other than with public health and CBSA, any other ministries? Uh, thank you for the member's question, um, and thank you for clarifying the question. Uh, for the public health agency work we did, we were aware that there were ongoing discussions with other government departments as part of operational implementation of the program. Uh, we were not contracted by, nor did we have any direct um, contracting or procurement related discussions as it related to ArriveCan to okay. support that work. Okay, so let's talk about the contracts. We talked about the competitive contract that you were mm -hmm. asked to bid on. Uh, we also know through the uh, Auditor General's report, there were a number of non-competitive contracts that you were ultimately awarded. So just the number, how many were competitive and how many were non-competitive? Thank you for the member's question. So the initial TA was the competitive SEPs. Um, so that was the, the... Is that the only one? For the... Is that the only one that was competitive? Uh, that is correct for the public health agency related work. Right. And if I may, there were then two subsequent contracts directly uh, awarded by the Public Health Agency to KPMG. That were non-competitive? That is correct. Okay. They were directed to us. Okay. And what about through CBSA? Thank you. The work that we did on the cybersecurity front, there were two contracts that were with GC Strategies. There was no contract direct with the CBSA. They were non-competitive as well, correct? Thank you. You weren't bidding with other companies you were asked to work with GC Strategy, so it was a non-competitive contract. Thank you. We were asked to submit a proposal to right. GC Strategies. Which was ultimately granted. Which was granted. Right. So two with CBSA, two with PHAC, that's four, and one was competitive for $5 million. How many employees for those five contracts worked on, uh, on that for $5 million? How many, how many employees at KPMG? Uh, Thank you for the member's question. I don't have the number off the top of my head, but I can say that over the close to two and a half years of time that we supported the public health agency, 
we had a number of people. So I was the engagement partner, but we had a number of people. Uh, I think on the original TA, we might have had 10 or 15 people that were identified that participated in some initial stakeholder engagement. Okay. And then as time went on, we okay, had... So let's, let's move on to the issue now that you were directed by CBSA to work directly with GC Strategies. You indicated, sir, when pressed, that was Mr. Antonio Utano, right? Thank you for your question. That is correct. Yes. Did he reach out directly to you or another partner? Thank you. Mr. Utano reached out to our federal government practice. And, and what does that mean? So we have... So KPMG has a number of industry specialists. Yeah. And who, industry who did he speak with at KPMG? Thank you. He ultimately spoke with a partner in our cybersecurity. Who? So the partner's name in the cybersecurity team was Mr. Imran Bashir. Okay. All right. And how was that communicated? Was it Thank a phone call? Was it an email? Was it a text? Thank you. The initial conversation was through email. Through email. The initial email. reach out was through email. Do you yes. still have a copy of that email? Uh, thank you. We, I would need to, to, to investigate and check. Okay. I'll be asking you, within the time permitted uh, by this committee, to tender that email. In fact, any and all correspondence, written correspondence, whether that's snail mail, email, a text message, any correspondence between CBSA and KPMG to work specifically with GC. Can you provide that to us? Thank you. We will definitely have a look to see what we have and what we can provide and get back to okay. you. Okay. Were you communicating at all with any other member of the CBSA team? Thank you for your question. No, not to my knowledge. Were you communicating with any elected official, the Thank president of the CBSA, the deputy minister, the minister of public Mr. safety, Mr. Brock, anything like up. that? I, I, I'm going to allow an answer, but... Thank, we, thank you. No. Yes. All right. Thank you very and, much. And, Chair, could we identify the timeline, please? So, so uh, um, I will at the end, but yes, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to requested documents, and I will explain how that, that works. Today, just to build a little bit of context in some of the questions that, uh, that my colleague had asked, um, now how much did the Harper government award to KF KPMG while they were in power? Thank you for the member's question. Uh, I, I'm not aware of the answer to that question, but as I said before, KPMG has been very proud to support the federal government for a very long time, um, uh, for many, many years, uh, well before well before this this uh, this body of work. Are you able to get us an answer to that question? Uh, thank you very much for the member's question. Uh, we can certainly endeavor to uh, <laughs> check that out and and follow up with the committee afterward, if you like. I want to clarify a, a few points because I'm rather troubled uh, by what I've heard here this morning. So to understand this, a senior Government of Canada official came to KPMG and said, we know you have the qualifications to perform $400,000 worth of cybersecurity assessments, but we're not going to contract with you directly. Instead, we want you to go through this two-person basement firm, which will also take a $90,000 cut, rather than dealing directly with CBSA. Am I understanding this correctly? A senior government official came to you and said, go through GC strategies. Is that correct? Thank you for your question. The government official asked us to submit a proposal for the cybersecurity work to GC strategies. Okay. Is this something that you've experienced personally in the past, where a government official has directed you outside of the direct contracting uh, connection relationship to a third party, you know, for lack of a better phrase, middle middleman, middle company? Uh, thank you again for your question. Uh, KPMG is often asked to subcontract by small, medium, and large-scale organizations where they do not have the capabilities to deliver on the specific piece of work or the requirements and where they feel as though KPMG can deliver the, the work at a very high quality level. Um, so subcontracting is not uh, unusual for us. Um, 
I, I, I want to follow up on that, though. But th here, here's here's the concern. I, I'm not going to quibble about KPMG's um, ability to deliver on contracts. Obviously, you're a large, successful uh, firm. There's no question about that. Where I have a concern is that GC Strategies is not an IT firm. They don't have capabilities, period. And, and so it's not a matter of subcontracting for another like-minded like, si like -minded business or similar business. This is a subcontract from someone who had no capabilities. Did this not raise any flags whatsoever that this was being subcontracted, that the government, the government of Canada was asking you to, instead of contracting directly, to go through a third-party GC strategies which had no capabilities to do this contract which you were qualified to do? Thank you. And again, uh, as mentioned earlier, at the time we did follow our strict client engagement processes and practices and at the time of the engagement there was nothing that stood out as peculiar from those processes and practices that we followed in following the instructions from the government and contracting with GC strategies on this specific piece of work and at a time that was unprecedented and it was an opportunity to help Canadians and uh, we complied with the with the ask. I just think Canadians might be concerned by what seems to be a very cozy relationship uh, that GC strategies seem to enjoy with senior government officials where contracts are being awarded through third parties to uh, to uh, to you know make this work you know we're, we're, we know hundreds of, the, of these middlemen type company are, are being used I want to address one final point before I run out of time though and that's about developing of the uh, de developing um, the um, uh, details and the uh, specifics of contracts. Has KPMG ever helped the government draft um, calls for proposals um, that you then bid on? Thank you very much for the member's question, and the answer is no, KPMG has not participated in that process. And would that be something that would be outside of the normal practice for a firm like yours or any other firm, or ought it to be? Thank you very much for the member's question. Um, the vast majority of the work that we would do for the government, uh, whether it's federal, provincial, or municipal level, is competitively bid work through requests for proposals. Um, and as I said before, we would not be involved in developing those kinds of uh, qualifications or criteria in advance of an RFP. I want to quickly address the issue of uh, cybersecurity work that you undertook. Um, the Auditor General noted some concerns with uh, cybersecurity work uh, in general, wherein uh, reliability security status was not um, held by those who undertook the work. Was your firm uh, fully qualified and fully uh, cleared in terms of reliability security clearance? Thank you, Mr. Nader. That is your time. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair, and I want to thank the witnesses for, for being here today. Um, we understand that the RCMP is investigating the ArriveCAN uh, scandal. Um, has KPMG been contacted by the RCMP in regards to this? Shen, the RCMP has not contacted KPMG. Okay. Uh, we know that uh, the om procurement ombudsman has said that 76% uh, of subcontractors did no actual work. Um, how would you respond uh, to that, given that you're one of these subcontractors? Uh, thank you again for the member's question. I, I can't really comment on all of the other subcontractors that have worked with the government. Um, but I, I, maybe I'll turn it over to Mr. Nijar just to comment specifically again on the work that we did uh, for, for the cybersecurity <clears throat> yes. work. Yes, thank, thank you. So the work that we performed with respect to the cybersecurity work, we performed um, over a period of, as I mentioned earlier, around six months. There was a large body of work that was performed uh, across five different streams of work um, that required very specialist expertise um, and folk. Can you be a little more specific? Like a, a, a large body of work over five streams, uh, that doesn't tell me a lot. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Um, so again, there were five streams of work that related to, um, as I mentioned earlier, vulnerability management, privacy, cloud, incident response, and secure development practices. And each what, of those. What does that What does that mean for me tangibly? If, if I'm using this app, you're you're maintaining 
security of my of my data, my name, my my address, that sort of thing. Thank you. Um, so we were asked to perform an assessment of the security and privacy of the application, uh, how it protected the information of citizens and um, and other parameters around cybersecurity, and, and and that's what we executed on. Okay, uh, and just going back to the suggestion that you deal with uh, GC strategies, we heard on February twenty seventh uh, that GC strategies was also suggested to approach you uh, for this expertise. Um, did you uh, had you bid on? Had you bid on a like separate separate from this? Had you bid and lost on the application development? I should know. We did not bid on any okay. application development work, as far okay. as I'm aware. Do you have any? Do you have any idea uh, why your company would have been suggested to GC Strategies? Have Have you? Do you have a long standing relationship with the government on this kind of stuff? For and um, we had no relationship with GC Strategies prior. Uh, KPMG is known in the industry within Canada and beyond as a firm that has uh, very specialist expertise in the area of cybersecurity um, with, uh, you know, um, a huge amount of depth and breadth in uh, those areas, uh, specifically within those five areas and beyond. And uh, my understanding is we were approached based on our expertise in these areas and our experience and being able to deliver on that piece of work. Has this ever, has this kind of situation ever happened to you before? Where Government of Canada official is suggesting that you pursue a contract with another company? Uh, thank you for your question. Again, uh, KPMG is subcontracted in, in numerous different scenarios, but with respect to your specific question, I'm not aware of the exact scenario um, uh, outside of this one. Okay. KPMG pays taxes in Canada? Thank you. Yes, we do. As, uh, as a taxpayer of Canada, um, would, would, your, would you not have concerns around the oddity of this? Um, that perhaps we should flag this. This is uh, something that doesn't happen often being suggested to pursue a contract with another con company. Um, did it ever occur to anybody at KPNG that perhaps this should be flagged? Thank you for the member's question. I'll, I'll take this one it, since it, it sounds like it's a little bit more general uh, than just the, the CBSA related work. As we've both said, I think today, this morning, uh, KPMG has extremely strict protocols around client and engagement acceptance. So we have to go through a very in-depth process every single time we undertake to work with a new client or an existing client to, to look for any irregularities, any independence conflicts, um, or other areas of risk that would either be uh, of risk to the client okay. if, and, and or to us. And, and we follow my, those my to the letter for this. I'm afraid that's, limited here. that's your time. So we have GC Strategies, a two-man uh, operation operating out of a basement that's made millions off of Canadian taxpayers during Justin Trudeau's $60 million arrive scam. And we were told that they would subcontract the workout to people that they found on Google and LinkedIn. But what we've learned today is that Antonio Utano at the Canada Border Services Agency reached out to KPMG. Uh, and I got some of the answers to my questions I asked you in my first round. I asked how many employees KPMG has in Canada. It's of 10,000 and 40 offices across Canada. And uh, the senior official from the Trudeau government said that if KPMG wanted to do work for the government, that you had to subcontract, be a subcontractor to this two-person firm. Is that the usual practice uh, in your experience of the government, that they would direct KPMG, one of the largest firms in the world, to work through a two-person staffing firm, the, a, a middleman like this? Is this, is this normal? Thank you for the question. Um, again, KPMG is subcontracted by organizations that are small, uh, medium, and of the same scale as KPMG in multiple different scenarios. Um, I'm not aware directly of uh, similar contracts that have occurred for the government with us, but uh, I can certainly check.
So the government um, has said that it uses 635 IT middleman companies like GC Strategies, Dalian, um, and you're not sure how many companies of, of that size KPMG does business with, uh, but has KPMG been a subcontractor uh, for Dalian or for GC Strategies on any other contracts than the ones that we've discussed today? Thank you for the question. No, we have not. You have not. You said Sharif Abdu was the government contact on the amendments to the non-competitive contracts. Did you initiate the amendments or did the government initiate them? Thank you for, for the member's question. Uh, Sharif Abdu was the, uh, the DG on the original TA that was directed to us through the SEPS uh, vendor of record. And the amendments were always at the public health agency's request for extension. Is it a usual practice for you to amend contracts with the government? Thank you again for the member's question. Uh, contracts vary by the nature of the client circumstances, the engagement work itself. Uh, this was an unprecedented time, I think we can all agree. Okay. And uh, so the amendments were at their, at their request. The amendments were at the government's request. Did you speak to anyone in government in uh, advance of your appearance at committee today? Thank you very much for the member's question. Uh, no, we did not. How many firms have uh, contracted uh, with the Government of Canada with KPMG as a subcontractor? You're not able to provide that answer today? Was that your, your previous uh, response? Could you, could you ask How me? many firms uh, that have been contracted by the Government of Canada have used KPMG as a subcontractor? Thank you. I, I, I cannot answer that today. Okay. Can you uh, undertake today to provide to the committee that list of, uh, of those contracts and the contractors for whom you were the sub for? We can certainly go back and see. Uh, it's a, yeah, it's a yes or no question. So will and you undertake to provide do. the information I understand to the yeah, committee? That's a yes, Mr. Baird. Thank you very much. Uh, you mentioned you had a discovery meeting with GC Strategies. Who was there? Thank you for your question. Is that... You're referring to the July meeting? Were there multiple d discovery meetings, sir? There was only the July meeting, and then there was the we were asked to provide a proposal to GC Strategies in September. Okay. Uh, who were at both of the meetings? So um, in uh, the July meeting, um, the, the, the cybersecurity discovery meeting was between Imran Bashir and GC Strategies. And who from GC Strategies? Thank you for your question. I believe that was um, Christian Firth. Okay. So just the two people at both meetings? Uh, thank you. Yes, I believe so. Okay. And uh, just for uh, certainty, KPMG has spent zero dollars on hospitality for Government of Canada officials. Thank you very much for the member's question. And to my knowledge, the th that is correct. Does... Uh, KPMG provide bonuses for securing contracts with the Government of Canada? So thank you very much for the member's question. Uh, the way that we compensate all of our staff is actually a pretty complicated uh, process. We've done about a quarter of a billion dollars in business with mm -hmm. the Government of Canada under Justin Trudeau. Uh, we're looking to find out if, if staff are bonused for, for getting that work, like the three quarters of a million dollars that KPMG was paid to uh, to advise the government on spending less on contracting. So thank you again for the member's question. And I will say that no staff or partner is directly compensated for a particular engagement. It's a multivariate complicated formula on how we assess people's performance against the firm's performance, their individual performance, the contribution they make to Canadian society. And it's a, it's a, holistic formula that, that gets um, pulled together in order to uh, identify compensation for all of our staff. Thank you. Uh, listening to your evidence um, with, with some respect, I, I don't believe you truly recognize how damning your evidence has been to the Justin Trudeau government. You talk about Mr. Nijar exercising due diligence and researching GC strategies, but GC strategies, according to the Auditor General, receive upwards to $20 million dollars for doing nothing other than connecting government officials with companies such as yourself. $20 million. They're a pariah. 
GC Strategies is persona non grata. They've lost all their contracts with the government. They've lost their security clearance. And you aligned yourself with GC Strategies, which brings into question the RCMP may be knocking on your door. So if you haven't lawyered up, you probably should be considering doing that. GC Strategies testified, not under oath, but there is a presumption of telling the truth at committee to committing criminal acts, criminal acts of fraud and forgery. And this is the company you aligned yourself with to the tune of almost $400,000. Is that correct, Mr. Nijar? Thank you for your question. Um, KPMG is not aware of anything related to GC Strategies outside of the work that the we The amount performed. of the contract was at $400,000? The amount that we charge GC Strategies for the cyber four hundred thousand dollars. They receive fifteen to thirty percent for doing nothing. Order. The government could have contacted you Just directly. One Mr. Brock, I've stopped the clock. I have a point of order. I, I didn't I didn't recognize the name. So if you could identify yourself again. Is it Mr. Biddle? Hi, my name's Chris Biddle. Hi, have been calling Hi, for hi Mr. Biddle. I, th I thought it was you. I wasn't one hundred percent sure. So I, I heard you in the earpiece, but uh, yes, enough, you have a point of enough. order. Um, I, I didn't raise the point of order when Mr. Brock spoke the first time. He, he's cutting off, as the witnesses are answering his direct questions, I know it's um, uh, an issue of um, intense uh, interest for all of us, but um, he's cutting off the witness at all of their answers, even as they're answering the question. Uh, it's not that they're being evasive, and I'm having a hard time okay. hearing it, and I imagine the translators uh, will be experiencing the same thing as well. All right. You just let them answer. Th thank you for raising that. Um, Mr. Brock, if you just kind of keep that uh, in mind um, for our, our – I'm, I'm finding the answers. I'm hearing them loud and clear, but I'm, I'm in the room. So, Mr. Brock, if you can just kind of just be aware of that for people that are not in the room, which, of course, is their right as members to, to Zoom in virtually. So, so Mr. Nigar, you indicated you didn't know about the – unusual, if not illegal, practices by GC Strategies, which you probably don't even know this. It, actually, your evidence today gives credence to what GC really stands for, Government of Canada, because it's the Government of Canada that's asking you to work with GC Strategies. Now, moving on. The Procurement Ombudsman is now investigating a concept known as bait-and-switch. Promising resources to drive up the cost of a contract and delivering less. Are you familiar with that concept? Thank you for the member's question. Yes, we are. The Ombudsman has discussed that committee before and is now launching an investigation into this fraud. Is this a practice ever used by KPMG? Thank you for the member's question, and the answer is absolutely not. Did this ever apply to the nearly quarter billion dollars in government contracts since you received, since Justin Trudeau formed government? Thank you for the member's question. Um, to our knowledge, all of the work that KPMG has done has been uh, under the specific procurement processes set out by the government, and we are extremely proud of the quality so the of no. the work that we've done. The answer is no. Has the KPMG been contacted by the ombudsman on this matter? Thank you very much for the member's question. To our knowledge, we have not been contacted by the Ombudsman's Will office. Will you work cooperatively with the Ombudsman as he investigates bait and switch? Clearly, you're going to be involved in this given the amount of the monies that uh, you've received in government contracts. Will you cooperate? Thank you very much for the member's question. And as I said, we, of course, would cooperate with any governmental bodies that would contact KPMG. We have not been contacted to, to, uh, by the Ombudsman directly. And, of course, we would come... Now, comply. Justin Trudeau has, uh, during the last oh, eight and a half, almost nine years, increased the size of the federal professional public service by over 40%. In 2015, he promised to cut back on the use of external contracts, yet in the fiscal year of 2022-2023, he spent $15.7 billion on professional and social services that year, some of that going to KPMG. Now... I know that you were retained by the Government of Canada as a consultant to provide an opinion or a recommendation on the government's ability to cut down on consultants. Now, leaving aside the irony of hiring a consultant to teach the Government of Canada how to cut back on consultants, I personally could have saved the government almost $700,000 by simply saying, use the federal public service that you increased by 40 percent. 
Now, you released that report directly to the government, is that correct? Thank you very much for the member's question. Uh, neither Mr. Nijar nor I were directly involved in that work, but we are aware and okay. we also understand that it, it's very typical for KPMG to be called in to do third party reviews like Thank you. that. Thank you. The report itself mm -hmm. has not been tabled uh, with all parliamentarians. Will you provide this committee with a full report? Uh, thank you very much for the member's question. Uh, as I said, neither of us were involved in that work, so I can't comment Someone on Someone at KPMG was, and will you find out who was responsible for yep. conducting the work and to provide Th this committee with a report? Yes thank or you, no? Thank you, Mr. Brock. Is that something you could... Uh, endeavor to get back to the thank committee you. about. Thank you. I was just simply going to say that our understanding was that if the work was done for the government, it would definitely be on the public record. And if we're, sure. if we're allowed to, um, yeah. to disclose without violating confidentiality, then, then of course we Th would That's fine. To we'll, we'll take it one step at a time. If you're able to get back to us on the status of that and, uh, um, uh, we'll, I'll work with the analyst, uh, at this side to, uh, see if that's available. And if you could report back to us on any limitations you have, um, I do understand there are obviously client um, privileges. Um, Parliament supersedes that, but we're not there yet. So let's just let's just see where it's at first as, as a first as a first step. Um, I, I want to begin by just making a comment about the concerns that have we've heard today, and how concerning it is uh, to hear from KPMG, a, a, a large one of the largest. Um, firms in, in Canada, uh, 10,000 employees, um, and then being asked by the government of Canada, by a senior Trudeau government official, to contract through a two-person firm in a basement with no IT experience. I, I, I can't begin to explain how uh, concerning this is, uh, and should be concerning for you as well, uh, that you as Point a... Point of order, a, Mr. A, a, Chair, if I could interrupt. Sorry, Mr. Nader. Just, just, just one second, uh, Mr. Nader. Yes, yes. Go ahead, please. Uh, could you clarify what time we're ending today? I was under the impression we were a two-hour meeting. I don't know what resources we have, and um, we seem to be at the end of our time. So if you could uh, simply let us know. Yeah, we're, we're, we're down to the last uh, 10 minutes here, so or close, oh, okay. closer to Okay, do we have resources actually. to go over the, uh, the two-hour allotment? Yes. Okay, thank you. Over to you, Mr. Nader. You have four minutes, 20 seconds. Thank you, Chair. And uh, uh, but how concerning this really is for Canadians that uh, this this lack of value for money was really uh, undertaken here. It reminds me of a, of a Liberal MP who was once elected and wanted to do a, a motion on uh, financial literacy, and then of course the PMO got a hold of that and said, "Oh, you can't do that." So she instead hate wasted resources over a number of parliaments trying to change the name of her riding uh, rather than focusing on financial literacy, um, point, which I think is order, unfortunate. Chair. I, point of order, y Chair. I yes. hope I'm going to have a chance to respond to that because well miss uh, hold on miss I, miss miss yeah, miss shannon you want to respond you, you okay i, I uh, sorry but I, I, good try. miss miss good miss shanahan you're miss 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 shanahan <laughs> you're there is a government slot next liberals so you will have a chance to respond however you like uh, and I would ask you to mute yourself, Ms. Shannon, because right now we're just hearing a lot of laughter, which is uh, rather odd. So, uh, Mr. Nader, three minutes, 50 seconds. Thank you, Chair. And, and there is a lot of odd things going on with this Liberal government, so I'll just, uh, just leave that there. Uh, to Mr. Nijar, um, how many resources did you personally have from KPMG working on the security, um, uh, cybersecurity assessments? Shin. There were a number of resources. I don't have the exact figure, but I can get that to you, no problem. But there were a number of uh, individuals at various different levels of seniority and experience. And, and if you could get that information, but to that end, the various levels of seniority and experience, was that information communicated specifically to GC Strategies, that, those, security, those levels of experience of those um, individuals? Uh, thank you for the question. So we identified the individuals um, to the CBSA and those individuals uh, were on the engagement and uh, I do not know if GC Strategies were aware of those individuals. I believe they were. They knew the names of those individuals, is my understanding. Um, and, uh, and those individuals worked on the, the execution of the engagement. Can we be sure that the individuals and their experience was correctly identified both to GC Strategies and through GC Strategies to the government? We've heard uh, before about them, GC Strategies 
uh, falsifying resumes, falsifying information, and providing that information to the government. Can you be sure that your information was correctly provided to the government? Thank you for your question. Um, so I cannot speak to the information that GC Strategy shared to the government, but um, we, we provided the names and the experience levels and the security um, clearance levels of the individuals that were going to be on the project, and they were on the project, and, uh, and, uh, and they executed on the completion of the work. Uh, thank you for that, Chair. And in my remaining time, I am going to move uh, a motion um, that the committee invite Mr. Imran Bashir, KPMG's National Public Sector Cyber Lead, to appear for no less than two hours on the committee's ongoing arrive can study, and that the witness be scheduled to appear within seven days of the adoption of this motion. Uh, this motion has been shared uh, with the uh, clerk, and uh, I believe uh, she could uh, will we'll okay. send it out. Uh, just I'm in, a, in a few, I see a couple of hands going up. I'm, I'm going to suspend uh, the meeting just for three minutes. Uh, I'll, just, I'll just explain what's going on here. So we have a motion now that we move right into this motion. It is a, a matter related to these committee hearings. Uh, witnesses, you're welcome to, uh, I'm going to suspend for three minutes, then we'll get going in. This can either be wrapped up quickly or something that takes a little bit of time. For Sorry, now, I'm going to Chair, ask. I just want to clarify Miss, something. Miss, Miss just wait a second. I'll hear you in a second. If you have a point of order, just one second. Um, I will. Uh, I'm going to suspend now. Please get up. Um, well, uh, why are you suspending, Chair? I, I have a point of clarification, just because I think. Uh, it would because as a as, as a practice, Miss Khalid, I'm uh, the motion is with the clerk. It will be sent out very shortly, so it's going to be a three minute suspension. Um, I'm going to come right back, and I just want to give our witnesses a chance to. Uh, stand up and just explain what's going on. I'll come right right back. So is that is that your concern, Ms. Khalid, or is there something else you wish to ask? No, Chair. It was, it was something else that I wish to ask. I don't okay. know why you always talk down to me, Chair. It's not nice. Well, Ms. Khalid, I'm, I'm wrapping things up with the witnesses, and you're interrupting me. So I'm happy to hear any points of order at, at any time, but it's odd to say, why are you suspending? Because I've actually started to make that as a practice as motions come up to give me members, in fact, often it's at the request of the Liberals that I, I, I've been asked to suspend. So I'm trying to continue that practice. I don't mean to speak down to anyone, uh, but I would just ask that at times when I'm addressing the witnesses that members just hold off. I will get to everyone in due course. So are there any points of orders before I suspend? Well, I have a question. Uh, are you like formally suspending the meeting? I, I, said, I'll I don't be, understand no, what's I, I'm coming back in three minutes. So I'm going to suspend the meeting for three minutes.